called me and said, did you know that Birth Order is on Dr. Oz's show this week? And I said, no, I did not know that. Um, so I did watch it, but I have to say, I particularly enjoy Dr. Kevin Lehman's book. So, um, but let's start a little bit. The effective birth order has been researched since the early 1900s. This is not some new thing. Uh, I'm going to start with a psychotherapist named um, Albert Adler. Dr. Kevin Lehman has brought it to the mainstream through Good Morning America, The View, Oprah, Today Show, and Focus on the Family, and now the Dr. Oz Show. But that was not Dr. Kevin Lehman speaking, it was a woman. Um, both Adam and Lehman's point is that there's no greater influence on a young child than his or her family. So this goes into the whole, are you born this way or is it your family that causes you to be this way? So how many of you have heard of birth order? All right, so now for those of you who know the answer, no fair, but those of you who know something about birth order, I want to know, now Kevin Lehman, let me just say that. He would come into this room and be able to guess your birth order, okay? Yeah. I'm not that good, so I'm gonna ask him to guess mine based on how I'm dressed. First one? First one is very, very close. Oh. <laughs> First one and some other are linked oh, together. Yeah. I'm an only child. Oh, that's See, it. I have to have earrings that have flowers that go with the flowers on my shirt. I got purple uh, and purple necklace. I have a friend in the church who's always like, wow, you match all the time. I'm like, yeah, because I'm an only child. No, I didn't that. <laughs> so that's why, only children. When I was a teenager, of course, if I was wearing turquoise, I needed to have my turquoise socks on because that matched, you know. Okay, then you'll, you'll understand if we get into this a little bit. But yes, that is exactly my birth order, first born, only child. Um, so anyhow, so now, before we get into your handout, I want to go through a few disclaimers, because a few of you are going to say, that's not me, that's not my sister, that's not my brother, come on now, why, why is this? Or I'll get the question right off the bat, well I've got, you know, seven siblings, now what? You're talking about first four, middle born, and last four, now what are you talking about? Or, some of you have only two kids, what does that look like? So, let's talk about some of the... Uh, factors that go into what is your functional birth order. Not your actual birth order, but how you function in your birth order. And for that of your children. Some of the factors that will have to do with the child themselves is spacing. General rule of thumb is that if there's a five year gap, it starts over again. So, for instance, my husband and his oldest, he has two old older brothers who are 18 months apart. And in fact, as I was getting ready for this talk, I started to think, you know what? I think his oldest brother is actually a functional second last born. And that his second born brother is really a functional first born because they're so close in age that sometimes happens when they're 18 months apart. So you can see a switching and who functions in which capacity, okay? But anyhow, there's a five year gap between Dave and Dan, Don, Dave, Dan. Steve, mm -hmm. don't ask what happened to Steve. <laughs> Anyhow, so uh, between Dave and Dan, there are five years, actually seven years, and it starts over again. So now he functions as primarily a firstborn, but I can also say there are some middleborn traits in him as a middleborn, but primarily that's where he functions. Okay, the sex of each child. There's the firstborn male and the firstborn female. Are you aware that most presidents of the United States are firstborn or only children? And oftentimes, if they're not the firstborn in their family, they're the firstborn male in their family. Um, so keep that in mind. So I have a male and a female child who are about four years apart. So I don't have a functional, in a way, firstborn in each of them. But my daughter does have some of the last born traits, so we'll get into that. The third thing to consider is physical, mental, and emotional differences. If the second born is physically bigger than the first born, or if there's a mental disability, or there's ADHD in the family, those kinds of factors will definitely play into where you function. And then sibling deaths, of course, or adoptions, either one um, in or going out. 
Um, the birth order of the parents. Firstborn parents are a lot different than the lastborn parents in their parenting stuff. So that can affect how your kids are turning out. And of course, the relationship between the parents. All these things are factors. So, um, the critical eye of the parent. The constant criticism will take its toll. If the parents are authoritarians who come down too hard or too unreasonably on their firstborn, they can turn them into a rebel who, instead of excelling at school as most firstborns would, messes up just to foil the plans of their perfect parents. Only children get into this, too, because there's a lot of pressure on only children. And then, of course, there's the blending of two families. You know, you got, you know, uh, you know, the Brady Bunch. <laughs> you know, one, what birth order is Greg and Marsha? You know, like, <laughs> where would they fit? All right, so let's get into your hand. First order and only child. Some of you know these kinds of things. Not only do they tend to be presidents, um, Kevin Lehman talks about how he was in a room full of pastors, and he told the pastors, you know, the majority of pastors are firstborn or only children, and they all kind of looked at him like, oh, okay, you're getting a little heresy here. You know, I don't, I don't know about this. And so he, he had them stand up, and sure enough, like, I don't know, out of 50 pastors, 47 of them were firstborns or only children. So, there, I mean, there is something to this, you know. Um, they can tend to be accountants or architects. They like detailed types of jobs. Why? Let's get into why. Look at their characteristics. Uh, we tend to be perfectionists, especially for those of you who have an only child. It's worse, much worse if you're an only child. And you think why? How would that be? You're getting all the attention, good or bad. <laughs> and you're like a little adult in a way. Um, and they're not doing that on purpose, per se, but it's a function of being an only child, is that you tend to be better with adults, speaking to adults, than even at the oldest. Uh, and there's a lot of expectations put on them, you know? So, uh, we tend to be reliable. We are list makers. I was showing Winnie. I have to keep this always in my book. Okay, this is my firstborn son's list when he was in preschool. Can anybody see this list? This is before he could write. I said, what are you doing? I'm making a list of what we're going to do today. Checking it off. Okay? Just in case you think this, this has, has nothing to do with anything. I think it does. Well organized. Oh my goodness. The difference between my son and my daughter is insane. The other day he said, I can't have someone so come over. My room is a mess. Your room is a mess? I walk in. There's nothing on the floor. Dresser is completely neat. There were a few things I had placed on his second bed. His room is a mess. Okay. When we moved, we just moved a few months ago, he was the first one unpacked. Okay. My daughter is the complete opposite of this. Um, also, in terms of well-organized puzzles, he had to have every puzzle piece together. And listen, I can relate to this. Okay, this is me too. So the two of us about puzzle pieces were insane. You know, if you're missing a puzzle piece, forget it. You know, I wouldn't bring it here. I mean, I'm not gonna drive you crazy. <laughs> so we tend to be critical. We're critical of other people, but we're also very critical of ourselves. Um, we tend to be more serious. We're very goal-oriented people. Uh, just to give you an example, I had a double major and a minor. In college, I always tell people I just because I'm an overachiever, a uh, little goal-oriented there. We tend to be people-pleasers. We want to please the adults in our lives. We want to please others. Um, we're loyal. We're very hard-driven and tend to be more scholarly and conservative. Okay? Also, I read about only children. We tend to be uh, good readers, which I am. I guess we spend a lot of time reading. Okay, so tips for parenting. If you are parenting an only child or a firstborn, well, I assume all of you are parenting at least a firstborn, right? <laughs> um, number one thing I want to Sorry. That's okay. We need a mommy's book. Sorry. No problem. Um, you don't want to reinforce their perfectionism. Now, what do I mean by that? Don't reinforce their perfectionism. You ask them to make their bed at four years old. Are they going to make the bed the same way you are? Is it going to look perfect? No. 
And what do we tend to do as parents? Oh, thank you. Smooth that out for you. Lump up that pillow. Let's fix it. Well, what did you just reinforce in that? You didn't do it right. You got to do it perfectly. So if you can, especially those of us who are perfectionists, this is a tough thing. Smile, say thank you, and walk away. Does it really matter if the bed is perfectly made? I mean, I know this is a little hard for us who are perfectionists. So, um, same thing about homework, those kinds of things, or handwriting. I, one of my friends in college, who was a firstborn, would say, I would sit and write, and if it wasn't done perfectly, I'd crumple it up and throw it out. Start over. Don't reinforce that. Oh, yeah, you didn't do that T right. Let's start over. No, no, don't do that. Because you're just going to, you know, reinforce that. And if any of you are perfectionists, you know, this is sort of, you know, a good thing and a bad thing all at the same time. This is not a trait you really want to uh, have overdeveloped. The second thing you want to do for your uh, only children or firstborns is to be patient in laying out the rules. They are definitely rule followers. My son is a rule follower. Well, except for some board games. But anyway, um, he, um, he's very big on the rules. He wants to reinforce the rules with his sister. He wants to reinforce the rules with uh, his classmates, the other band members. Know. Um, so be patient in laying them out and explaining them. They want to know why. The third thing is you want to grant them some special privileges as being the firstborn. Now you have to remember, if you're the firstborn is, and they've been usurped by this little baby that's come along. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, right? And if they're older, if they're old enough to voice it, you will know. Yeah. Excuse me, what is this kid doing? My stuff. Yeah. And why is this kid taking away time from mom and dad. So, um, one of the privileges I give my son, he's 12 and a half, is he has a later bedtime. This is a big deal to him. He likes the fact that he has the later bedtime. Kathy has to go to bed, you know, 8.30. He gets to stay at 9.30. Uh, certain movies he's allowed to watch that he knows his sister is not allowed to watch. Spider-Man or some of the Batman. So I'm not big on that, but Hope he likes to watch them. So think about some of those special privileges. The fourth thing, and I know some of them are a little young for this, but it will happen. Avoid making them your instant babysitter as they get older. Some of you are the oldest and could say, yeah, please, you know. Every time mom and dad wanted to go out, I got stuck with watching my younger siblings, so. Um, number five is give them help when asked for. They have a hard time asking for help. I can tell you that from experience as an only. They like to ask for help, but when they ask for it, they, they need it. Um, and the sixth one is try and spend lots of time with them. Try and remember that they have been usurped. It's, your attention will be towards naturally the younger one if you have more than one. And so, you know, because they're the ones that need more help, they're the ones that need more whatever. Try and take some extra time with the older one, uh, just the two of you. And then I have a big bold letters. Remember, we are we are sensitive to criticism. <clears throat> your oldest and especially your oldest. Because think about it, we didn't have any siblings. We didn't have anybody teasing us. And so when we get teased, honestly, for a long time, and still to this day, there are times I don't get it. I don't realize somebody's teasing me, you know. So um, just remember that we're a little sensitive. Okay, so how about middle boy? Middle born. They tend to play off the firstborn. So whatever the firstborn is like, they play off of that. And I see that with my own kids sometimes, you know, uh, even though they're boy and a girl. Uh, for instance, if I call my son, guess who shows up? My daughter shows up. I didn't call you. Why are you showing up? Because she's watched the firstborn. She sees that he gets in trouble for not showing up, so she figures she might as well show up. Uh, Middleborns tend to be a little bit unpredictable. They tend to find their value, their space, their uh, connectedness outside of the family. They're going to find it with their friends. Uh, they then, therefore, tend to have a lot of friends. And they're very loyal to their peers. Sort of skipping around here a little bit, they um, tend to avoid conflict. I have a good friend who's a middleborn, and I could tell right away she was a middleborn because of how she avoided conflict. You know, 
and yet at the same time they try to mediate, like if they see something going on, because they, they've been mediators through their growing up with the siblings. They tend to be more independent. They tend to keep their opinions to themselves. They're a little bit secretive, and they're not split. These are the kids that are not split. These are also the kids, we'll get into this, who have no pictures of them. <laughs> if you are middle born, you can attest to that, I'm sure. There are no pictures of, there's, there's my oldest, and then the youngest, and where am I? I have, no, I have baby, graduate, college. That's it, that's what I have. So, um, they tend to be entrepreneurs. They make good dip diplomats, because they're into that mediation. So how are you going to parent these little boys? Have a little you need to really take time to talk with them. Because they feel squeezed out, because they're off on their own doing their own thing, you really want to take time <coughs> and talk with them. You want to help them feel special. Um, maybe it's letting them pick out some clothing, because they don't, they, you know, they can have all the hand-me-downs, so it's nice it's once in a while to get a piece of clothing that's yours that you pick out, that you like, not that your oldest sibling like. Um, you want to give them some regular privileges that he or she can count on doing. And I already said this, but buy them something new, a new toy, a new book, something that's new and for them, something that makes them feel special. You really have to listen carefully to them because they don't talk a lot. So once they get talking, you want to really tune in. And the last one, and I already alluded to this, take lots of pictures. Try. Try. I mean, I have, I only have two, and I have to say, I've got my son's baby album. It's all done. It's my youngest one. I have a baby album for it. <laughs> There's not one picture in it, but I have one. <laughs> okay. Now, what Dr. Oz, by the way, was talking about is that there's now some research coming out. We have, we've had this research about personality for a while. Now there's research coming out to suggest that certain of us are prone to certain diseases based on the fact of our birth order. So I'll go back real quick. The firstborn, if you can, we're sort of type A personalities, uh, high amount of stress sort of put on ourselves because we're so driven. So what do you think that would mean we're more tending towards? Heart attack. Heart issues, high blood pressure, okay. Uh, I didn't like what they said about the onlys. I, I don't like sometimes what they say about onlys anyhow, but we tend towards apparently obesity. Uh, they think it's because we get fed more? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have to fight off our siblings. I don't know. Um, Middleborns, this is kind of interesting, they tend towards chronic fatigue syndrome. Hmm. I don't know why? Uh, trying to keep up? Trying to keep up? I don't know. I have no idea why. I, I, I guess you have to go back and Google it and watch it. Okay, lastborns. Lastborns, can you guess just looking at that what they tend to be? In terms of rebels. Rebels, they're a little bit rebellious, but I mean in terms of careers. What, do you, what kind of careers? The what? Salesmen, they were great salesmen, great salesmen. And they also tend to make good comedians. Jim Carrey, as they last born. And I actually have a friend here who's out there right now, and I happen to know her husband quite well, and I pegged him right away. He's the last one. He's the biggest kid of them all. I'm like, yep, he's the last one, isn't he? Yes, he is. All right. We, they tend to be people a people person. They want to be around people a lot. Very charming. My daughter kept asking me, what does charming mean? I don't know. She's like, all I can think of is Prince Charming. What does that mean? <laughs> uh, but that was, that's what makes a good salesman. They're charming. They can be spoiled because they're the babies. Uh, and they tend to be a little bit manipulative. They tend to blame other people because you know, it's kind of easy when you're the last one to get other siblings. They're attention seeking, again, they gotta compete a little bit, so how else are they gonna do this? And they tend to be engaging. Family clown, is how we get those comedians out of them. But again, they have to find some way to get the attention. You got your oldest who's serious, and he's scholarly, and he's taking the attention that way, so here's another way to get attention. Uh, they tend to be affectionate, absent-minded. Okay, I have to tell stories of my youngest brother-in-law, again, Steve. 
um, you know. But when he went to Europe, now first of all, I have to say this, my husband to this day will talk with gritted teeth. He went to Europe. And he asked my parents to go to Europe. Why would he ask? Why would he think they would let him go to Europe? I never would have asked. You know, here's this serious, oldest. Yes, he went. Had a great time. And while he was there, absent-minded, he, he loses his keys a lot, but he also loses his wallet a lot. So while he was in Europe, he lost his wallet and had very little to no money. So here he is, charming, charming guy. He decides he's going to go gambling, and he actually won back more money than he won. I, it, these are stories about last forms, okay? So uh, they're carefree. They tend to be a little bit more rebellious. Again, oh, not a story of my youngest brother-in-law. He, when he was in high school, said, Dad, I want to paint my room, my one wall, all black and put the pyramid from Pink Floyd on, on the wall. Okay, now yeah, now this is my oldest brother-in-law is going, you let him do what? You would never let me do that if I had asked you to paint my wall black. Because you know, it's hard to get black paint off the wall. So, anyhow. Uh, isn't that great? Yeah. You let him do it. You let him do it. Uh, but part of that is, I mean, you think about it now as parents. By the time you get to your last born, you're a little worn out. Like, is this really worth fighting about? You don't really care anymore. So, okay, you let him. You know, and, and his st only stipulation was, and you will paint the wall when we move, okay? Because that's not going to be my job. But go ahead and paint it black, whatever. Um, and, and they tend to be tenacious, so. And actually, Lee, Kevin Lehman is a last born, which is kind of funny, if you, if you read his book. Uh, he has a great sense of humor. All right, number one, tips for parenting these last forms. Be sure that they have their fair share of responsibilities. It always falls to the oldest. Middle born, last one gets away with nothing. Uh, number two, and this is a hard one because you are worn out at this point, and in fairness, sometimes you change a little bit, but try and hold them responsible for the same rules that you put down. I know Karen and I were talking about this. Her oldest daughter could not go on a sleepover until she was 10. So she got a second born who was, oh, she was ready easily by eight, right? Seven maybe even to go on overnight. But uh-uh, the oldest born was like, listen, I was 10, she'll be 10. <laughs> you stick to those rules, so. And, and that makes the oldest feel good, too, to see that you are sticking to the same rules that you held for the first one. Now, again, in fairness, sometimes you do loosen up a little. Like you say, well, maybe, you know, maybe an hour TV is okay when you're two, you know, like an <laughs> hour and a half. All right, two hours. Okay. But, all right, number three, you want to make a big deal out of their accomplishments. They tend not to have that because you've already made a big deal out of firstborn's accomplishments, uh, middle born air, and this baby. And, Number four, don't do the work for them. I know that might sound crazy, but a lot of babies get away with either having their sibling or their parent do the work for them. You know, I know they're little, but don't write their college essays, really. <laughs> Number five, be persistent about schoolwork. And I think of my youngest brother-in-law this way because he was not a great student. He could have been. He was smart. He was as smart as my husband. But we didn't really do the score. And mom and dad kind of let them get away with not doing it. And number six, and this is what I have to go home and do, is complete their baby book. Yeah, <laughs> doesn't have a baby book going, right? So, that's really it. I, I would really recommend to you Kevin Lehman. Um, the Earth Order book, unfortunately somebody checked it out. Here's a little reminder to you, if you check out a book, please bring it back, because somebody checked it out and never brought it back. So this is my copy. Somebody wants to borrow it, I'd be happy to let you borrow it. But um, you don't have a copy? Yeah. Audio book. There we go. Because he's funny. Mm -hmm. he's, he's got a good sense of humor, <laughs> easy to listen to. And uh, for those of you who have only children, he's got a whole chapter just on only children. 
on parenting them. But the biggest thing that he talks about with only children is the perfectionism, that we tend to be so perfectionistic. Uh, and that that's the thing as a parent, you really have to try and help curb and not reinforce so much. I have a question. Okay. Based upon your um, curriculum and your relationships with you know, your family members, could some of your traits, even if you were first born, take on that a third born or a second born? Like, that happen? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and again, birth order is not the only thing that affects your personality. This is one that they think is a, a strong indicator and that you tend towards these things, but certainly other things come into play uh, in your family dynamics and different things. And I've always said, you know, it's kind of funny, I've always looked at my son and wanted to say, why did he inherit all my bad qualities? Well, he's also the firstborn, and I'm an old boy, so of course he did. Oh, I one more story on him. Talk about perfectionistic, okay. When he was little in a high chair, so that would make him what? A little over a year, I think he was. He gave him those big crayons. What do you think he did with them? Put them in his mouth. That's what everybody thinks. No, he didn't put them in his mouth. He, he, he tried to line them up in a straight line. And when one fell down, he knocked them all down and started over. I mean, you want to talk about a perfectionist. I was like, oh, I'm looking at the counseling bills right now. <laughs> Right? She did the same thing. Yeah. Your daughter did the same thing? She used to line up all of her, like, cars or things. And uh -huh. we, would, we would just be mean parents. And, like, when she wasn't looking, take one and turn it the other way. And she would walk by and do a double take, and she would notice. She was, like, two years old. She would notice. She right. would come back and fix it. Because it wasn't all perfect. <laughs> yeah, the other thing he used to do, I forgot about this. My husband reminded me. He used to flip up the handles on a dresser. He would flip them all up. I don't know why. And, and, and my husband would do the same thing. Let's put one down and see if he notices. <laughs> oh, yeah, he noticed. I don't know why he felt that he would do that. Why do you have to do that? <laughs> so, any other questions?